Uh, hello, everyone. My name is Chris Rydell, actor and now podcast host, I guess. Um, that guy you've seen on a million TV shows and movies, but you still do not know my name. And I'm David Allen Bache, actor and sometimes producer. And you also recognize me from lots of films and TV shows, but you probably couldn't name one of them right now if I paid you to. The two of us and our guests are going to let you in on some secrets on how to make it as an actor and share some private stories from the many movies and TV shows that we've worked on. That's right. We're going to interview a special guest each week, and we'll get their best advice and wisdom for you about how to break into this business and how to stay in it. And yes, again, there will be stories, stories, stories. So let's get to it. This is Confessions of a Working Actor. Excuse me. Recording. We are live again on Confessions of a Working Actor. What show Chris, is this? Chris Rydell. <laughs> this, How many have uh, we done now? I I don't know. You know, well, it depends what order the engineers decide to put them in. I think uh, at least eight or ten. I think, uh, yeah. I think possibly more than that. Maybe twelve or fourteen. I don't know. Yeah, I think sixteen. Right. I mean, yeah. You. I want to thank you. You were very encouraging to me the other day when I. We were texting about some schedule stuff for the podcast, and I was like, ah, I, I kind of have my head up my ass. I got this last-minute 24-hour turnaround for this audition, and it was 11 pages. And I'm like, um, but I love that you, your first re reaction to that was not like, oh, shit, or why did they give you so many pages? I, I just want to say I love that your first reaction was, yeah, isn't it amazing as actors how we just pull it out, how we just get it done? And I was like, yeah. Okay, I got to go get this done, and you really inspired me, so that was awesome. Well, thank you for uh, for saying that. I appreciate it. Well, okay, it's a love fest. Uh, speaking okay. of speaking of people we love, I am incredibly happy that we're going to get to talk to this guest um, this week. I I think it's fair, absolutely fair, to say he's making a comeback. He is a huge inspiration. He's been on quite a journey. A child star at thirteen became a huge movie star. This is true. Yeah, and he did films like, uh, well, after the ones we really know, yeah. um, Pecker, John Waters. That was such a good movie, right? Uh, Before and After, directed by the Academy Award nominated Barbette Schroeder, mm -hmm. and where he starred with Meryl Streep. Oh, that's right, Liam Neeson, and The Grass Harp with, hey, get this. <laughs> Walter Matthau, oh. Jack Lemmon, and Sissy Spacek. Jesus, some what heavy a cast. hitters. Some heavy oh, hitters. Serious heavy hitters. Yeah. And you know, look, just look. Despite all of those credits, you you know him best from Terminator Two. Uh, we'll find out if he's okay with that. If he likes being known for that, who knows? Um, so let's welcome Edward Furlong. Hey guys, what's Eddie. up? Eddie, hey, thanks Eddie. for hey, thank, you know what? Thanks for joining us. Thank you. Thank you for that. Awesome intro. Thank you so much. Um, you know, what's funny is I was listening to you guys talk and uh, it's so, you know, talking about like pulling shit out of our ass when we have to like, do, you know, do the lines and stuff. And yeah. Oh my God, man. It's so weird. I have this weird issue where it's like, I, and I, I don't understand why. And I'm like, I literally work. I mean, it's crazy, but whenever I'm like auditioning and I do get all those pages and I'm like, fuck. And it takes me, forever to like learn the lines and it's like you know this whole process but then like when i'm at work yeah they can throw me whatever the hell and i can just get it now we have now we have the same manager though and he told me that you have a spectacular memory and he told there's no reason he would say that he said like you know he's not blowing smoke up my ass right he said eddie's like he just he'll look some look at something and like uh, if you're on set with him he'll look at something once and he's like bam he's got it yeah, it's weird. When I'm working, it's it's bizarre. I can like mm. look at the pay. You know, I don't know if it's just automatic and we've been doing this for so long. It's like or the pressure of knowing that we yeah. have to do it. Like, I don't know, but it's like, yeah, it's like you know, at work, I can get like a monologue, for instance, and look it over a few times and kind of grasp it. Mm. But then, like you know, an audition, just a couple pages or something. It's like I I don't know what it is, man. Like. Mm. uh I'm not very good at auditioning. I never have been. It's like a, it, it's a totally like you said, man. It's like a totally different skill. Yeah, you know. Well, that's um, a coach once said to me. 
you know, I said the same thing. I was like, I'm not good at auditioning. And this coach said, and I said, I said, I just said once said to me, by the way, it was last year, a coach said to me, um, maybe, maybe you're just, you're still learning about auditioning. And I was like, well, what? And he's like, maybe you're not, it's not that you're not good at it. Maybe just say you're still learning about auditioning. And I was like, oh, you know, and that kind of took some of the pressure off of me. I was like, all right. So I am learning about like, well, how much time do I want to spend on the lights? And, you know, how, how do I, do I like that angle? I don't like I don't like the way I look on that angle. Like I gotta find a better place to put the camera, you know. So I I, I was like, all right, we should as actors sometimes we could let ourselves off the hook. I mean, I'm, my feeling is that we're always still learning, mm. you know. Yeah. And uh, to think that we we got it as actors would be foolish, mm. right? I mean, we have skills, yeah, and we go and we work with other people and we hone those skills more and more. Yeah, hundred um, percent. As far as yeah. you know, auditioning, I, I've always, you know, been the guy that's sitting in the, in the waiting room and going, I know they can see my heart pounding through my shirt, <laughs> right? And they're like, Oh, you're yeah. my agent would be, man, you see, they they said you were so relaxed. I was like, Are you kidding me? I was ready to have a fucking heart attack, <laughs> like in the, you know, in the <laughs> waiting. room. You know, I, I, yeah. I can't believe they didn't say, excuse me, Chris, we can see your heart pounding through your shirt. Yeah. Why don't you just take a couple deep breaths? You know, I always no. got so fucking nervous. And and like like Eddie said, I, once I got the job, I felt like, OK, you know, mm. I'm here, you know, just relax, calm down. You know? I, I, I still get I mean, I, I still get nervous. I was on a set last week and, uh, you know, I got nervous before I walked on. I was prepared. I was ready to go. I knew they liked me. I still get nervous. I don't know. Eddie, do you get do you like what's your what's your feeling about um, nerves beforehand or, you know, like what, what I get you nervous say? before auditions for sure. Yeah. Like, you know, yeah. um, <clears throat> I mean, I guess naturally I, I'm a little bit like, you know, have like social anxiety to you know, tendencies. So it's like, I'm walking to a room, my, your job is to impress whomever, you know what I mean? It's, you can overthink that. Uh, oh, yeah. You know what? I'll tell you one of those, this is a pretty funny story that I'll tell you one of the scariest. So I'm already like, kind of like a nervous wreck when I go to an audition in the first place. Yeah. But um this is like a really funny story. This is like the scariest audition that I ever went to. I I love this. I love that this is coming up right now because we you we almost always ask all our guests this, and I love that 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 it just came up naturally. Tell us, tell us. <laughs> uh, dude, yeah. So I don't remember what role it was, and I never got the movie or anything. But uh, I was literally like. You know, this was back in the day, but I was like, I, I, I stopped off at my like little pharmacy, you know, before the audition. And, you know, I knew the guys there and they're like, you know, hey, you know what, do you want to try this brownie? And I was like, yeah. And I like, and I, and I, and I just was like, nah, nah, nah. I chewed the whole thing and like just an idiot, dude. And I was like driving, I think on the 405, I was like driving to Santa Monica and it was like literally like an hour, I forgot about it. And it was like an hour later and I'm about 20 minutes away from the audition and I fucking like, everything just goes quiet. And I'm like, oh fuck, I'm really scared right now. <laughs> <laughs> like, fuck. And I was like, literally, I mean, I just, you know, poor Mark, man, he's put up with so much, but you know, like I wanted to call him and be like, I can't go, I can't, this is too crazy. But I was like, no, no, you got to, you know, you made your bed, lay in it. All and right. uh, I fucking, dude, I, the whole time, I know they knew I was completely stoned, <laughs> dude. Like my, you know, I, I'm sure I had this dumb, stupid smile on my face and yep. like every, you know, uh, you know, every response took a little longer than it should, you know, it's just like, <laughs> oh my God. And, um, yeah, so that was like my scariest audition. You know, what's weird is, uh, is like, you know, since I've been kind of getting back into things and, and everything, we were talking about this, like the, the or zoom or whatever. And, uh, <clears throat> because I'm, I feel sort of, um, 
you know, like not great about how I audition. You know, I usually kind of more rely on being in the room and sort of talking and being who I am, you know, and it's, it's weird when you don't, when you can't like, it's just weird. It, it, it's a totally different thing when you're doing it over like a zoom call or whatever. Yeah. It's, well, it's there's hard. no, there's no human interaction. I mean, it's really, yeah, that's yeah. for sure. Um, I want to, I want to ask about speaking of human interaction. I want to ask about a couple of humans that I know that, that you worked with. Um, I'm going back a little ways now. I, uh, have a friend named Ellie Canner, who's a director, uh, who directed for the love of money, I think, um, that you did a long time ago. And I was like, when I was looking you up and checking out some other credits that I didn't know, I was like, Oh, Ellie Canner, that's good. Um, she's a great director. And then I realized you did a fucked up movie called brain scan. I don't know yeah. if you remember it. Um, and the guy who played like the super scary, like the trickster, like the, 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 the T. monster, Rider T. Ryder Smith. Yes. So I did Shakespeare with T. Ryder Smith in New Jersey before either of us ever really started working in this business. Very talented. Very, very talented, talented guy. Guys. Super intense. Super intense. And I was very intimidated when I was younger, when I, when I first met him. I, very intense. But uh, So usually we ask our guests, how'd you get started, right? Now, we know a little bit more about how you got started. We know about Terminator 2 with Arnold Schwarzenegger, and you were just a kid. Um, yeah. Listen, if you, could, if you could give some advice now, like if you had to think back um, and about something that you did right and something that you did wrong. So the movie, fin the movie opens... Uh, big, huge success. Everybody's looking at you, um, either personally or professionally. What's something you did right back then? Um, and you were like, yeah, that's good. I handled that well. And what's something that you feel like, eh, I did that wrong. I wish I had done it differently. You know, yeah. Like, I mean, basically when I started, it's, it's completely, you know, crazy sort of golden ticket story because mm. I, you know, I had never done anything before. I wasn't an actor when I started on T2 and everything. And, I don't know. I always trip out because, I mean, literally, I loved movies. I was obsessed with movies as a kid, and I I watched a lot of them, and um, I sort of manifested it into my life. I don't know, you know. I, I just knew that that's what I wanted to do, and somehow it just came to be at a very early age, yeah. you know. And uh, that always trips me out because, I mean, literally. I would talk about it at school, like in my old like yearbooks and the, you know, kids were like, Oh, you know, good luck being an actor, blah, blah, blah. you right. know what I mean? Like, it's right. really weird. And uh, I think because I believe in it so much and I love storytelling and just, you know, playing make believe as a job so much that um, I've continued to stick with it, even though times can be rough and, you know, sometimes financially it's, it can, it's a fucking up and down roller coaster uh doing this shit and and there's and there's there's a there's a happiness that comes with um you know doing what you love you know and and believing in yourself and, and continuing it and you know mm. um not giving up i don't know is that a good yeah, <laughs> is that a yeah good no answer? i like, yeah that's a that's a great answer and what i what i'm taking from it is um how powerful words are and how we can manifest the good and the bad, you know. Um, I know that um, that I've manifested good and bad in this business, you know. I, I've put myself in situations where, you know, I've said it before that I was, you know, choking on the ashes of the bridges that I burned. You know, I, I had showed up to, mm -hmm. to auditions way before there was dispensaries, you know, and gotten a call back from my agent going, what the fuck did you do? You know, and um, and at mm -hmm. the same time, I've I've believed that that I belonged in rooms and uh, and created stuff for myself and put myself in position to um, to work with some amazing people. Um, this is this is a, a journey that, you know, that it's not just a straight up journey. And this is something that I kind of didn't understand, which was. Um, you know, I figured, oh, you know, I made X amount of dollars this year and the next year I made a little bit more and the next year I made more. And then when it started to turn on me, you know, I felt like, 
you know, it was over or, you know, I just got down on myself because I kind of had this vision that it was going to be this trajectory to, to stardom, yeah. you know, and, um, and then I just got in my own way. Um, that's always good advice to actors is stay out of your own way. Mm -hmm. That's a big, that's a really big one. You know, we were talking earlier about, you know, auditions and, you know, trying to be perfectionistic and make it perfect. And, um, you know, when you start to have success and you start to work it, I think that's, I think that's there too, you know? And, um, and Chris, like you said earlier, uh, I, I, I was always thinking that they were going to, that they were going to see my heart pounding in my chest, you know, like, um, and, uh, and Eddie, I think I read somewhere that you, you once touched on something that I think that I know I've experienced. I think all actors have, which is like the imposter complex of like one of these days they're going to figure out, I have no idea what the fuck I'm doing. Like someday people are going to realize that I just love to tell stories and play, like you said, play make believe for, for a living, you know, like get paid to, to pretend, but then they're going to realize that like, I'm, I just have, I don't know what I'm doing. And I think we all feel that way sometimes, you know, it's like we're pulling something over on someone, I think was the way you put it. And, um, and yeah, the, and I imagine that that must have been hard to deal with at such a young age. Though, right. So like, how do you, how do you handle that as a teenager? Jesus. It, it was, um, you know, like, again, you know, like, uh, I mean, first, like, you know, I, I, I hate to complain about like, you know, cause I, I hate it when people are, uh, you know, like, oh, so rough. I was famous when I was young. You know what I mean? But it's like, it's like, um, yeah, I mean, for mm. me, I mean, it's been a blessing. Dude. I mean, honestly, my life mm. is, I, I wouldn't change anything. Um, you know, I mean, you, you were kind of asking, like, you know, what I did wrong. And um, I think, you know, it's like a lot of times when you become successful, um, and especially with the pressure and everything, because yeah. it's hard. It's a job. Dude. It's tough. And it's sort of like, um, you know, especially when you're sort of in the spotlight at all, like it becomes sort of like a 24 mm. seven sort of job, you know? And uh, yeah, it can be hard as a kid. And I think what can happen is you can lose sight of how blessed you are. Mm. You know what I mean? I think you can, um, uh -oh. I think. Uh, is, that the, is that the dog? I don't know. Uh, my my dog. Oh, That's my dog. I know you guys Diana. can't see this, but that is yeah, a beautiful here. dog. <laughs> yeah, she's German Shepherd. Um. Yeah, Lula. she's well. She's half husky and half either um, German Shepherd or Mao. I'm not really sure. Beautiful dog. We don't take it as complaining, um, you know, when someone says this job, this job comes with a lot of pressure because it does, because that's what we do for a living, right? We tell stories, but we do it when people are watching us. Yeah. Because if you're telling stories and no one's watching, then you're something else. I think you're a poet or you're a novelist or you're, right? right. But if you have an audience, that to me, the audience is part of what makes us, makes theater theater or makes film and TV, you know, what it is. And, and, there, is, and there is a lot of pressure. Um, and... We were not just asking what you did wrong, um, and we ask every guest that, like what's something you did wrong starting out. We we're also asking about what you did right. And one thing I wanted to say was, um, if you can talk about it a little bit, um, what went right on American History X? Because I have to say, I think that's a spectacular performance by you, and I really mean that. And I think it's one of Ed Norton's best performances ever. And I also think it's some of the best acting I've ever seen on, on film. I just insisted that my 13-year-old daughter watch it with me because I said it's not only a really important movie about, raci about racism and discrimination, but yeah. it's also beautifully done. And it's, it's like it seems effortless, all of it. Like what went right there? Yeah, dude. You, you know, it's crazy. You show your daughter, like, people come up to me, uh, like, you know, and they say they saw it in high school and shit. And I'm like, well, first of all, how do you see that in high school? I mean, how do they edit that, you know? <laughs> but uh, no, dude. Um, you know what? Like, when we were doing that movie, it's like you never really know. I mean, you don't know if it's going to be big or not. So, I mean, that's not really what it is. It's. It's more like it just felt right the whole time, you know. It just it the you know, um, 
it was one of those things where you just knew you were doing something special. And um, I, I was like Tony K, like, you know, who was directing it the whole time. He, um, he had this really interesting sort of way uh, that he directed, which was like basically, I mean, this was before digital cameras, but the amount of film that he shot um with really with, with this movie was crazy because basically he used all like natural lighting i mean we didn't use really any lighting unless it was like you know a night shot and they had you know but i mean for the most part like when we're in the house mm. and they're doing a, it's all natural lighting and he the scenes weren't really blocked out he was just kind of holding a handheld the whole time mm. and he's just filming and you just kept going like you know there was no like sitting down and waiting and sort of losing your i mean the whole time you're just going and going and and that did that help you just stay in the character you didn't have a choice you had to like stay in it yeah yeah but it's like you know and and it's it's weird you know because you do movies where it's like you think they're gonna be good but then you get there and it's just i mean so much of it is everyone involved you know like just everything and ed norton you know i mean he's so fucking talented you know like and i I mean honestly like i'm not like a uh i'm not like um you know i'm not like uh daniel day lewis or anything you know i'm not like fucking you know like i don't get really like you know i'm not i'm not method method at all um right it just um i don't know dude like it just it just felt right i don't know yeah, it's hard to explain. You know, I'm so glad. I'm so glad you said that because that was going to be my first question, which was, did you know when you were making this film that it was special? And um, because there's that feeling that you get that you're around something that's uh, bigger than 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 you. Yeah. And and uh, and that's what's like incredible about being an actor. And obviously. Um, you had a real connection with with Ed, and um, it showed. Yeah, you know what? Like, um, you know, and and also, it's like not many times you get to do a movie where, like, I mean, we were. I mean, there were times when we we're doing the movie, and Ed Norton's doing his dialogue or whatever, and I'm looking at people like, should we be doing this? Like, I don't know. Like, you know, knowing but knowing that the story was going to be so fucking strong when it all hit you know but mm. there was time i was just like god damn i hope people get this you know and like you know really taking risky chances and stuff you know doing that you know um it it was it was it was and it was brutal i mean it was so hard to watch there were pieces of it that were hard to watch and and i i warned my daughter i said look there's a scene out on the sidewalk they, they're outside, and it's the scene where I'm just going to I said it's a little bit of a spoiler alert, but you're going to know it's coming. It's a scene where the older brother gets arrested, and he's going to jail, right? And this, that's, this, is how, this is what he does to go to prison, right? And you can't unsee it. And it's such strong filmmaking that when you watch the younger brother seeing what the older brother did, you never see it. But all you have to do is see it on the younger brother's face. And like we saw on your face— what happened and and we can't un- and I can't unsee it I'll never be able to unsee that moment and to me that's like it's not the same as watching like some schlocky horror film and being like oh it was gory right this was an act of violence unlike anything I'd ever seen or heard of and it, we didn't even see it but it was you're right real- but you didn't see it didn't see it isn't that nope. weird like, but, yeah, I know, but that. it was so much more devastating because we had to watch you experience it and we had to then, then, then he cut. Then Tony K cuts to Ed Norton's character, and he's experiencing it with out of triumph, and that's even more terrifying. It's it's just it was absolutely terrifying. And, yeah, yeah so your you know, imagination is, is, is more powerful yeah. than actually seeing yeah. it. You know, yeah, dude, it's funny too because a lot of people are convinced that the, that they saw it happen. You know, right. and it's right. like, you know, yeah, it's it's like. Um, it can everything can be so much yeah it's 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 definitely like if you saw it and it was schlock i mean it just wouldn't be the same it would be different like yeah that. yeah 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 and i'm i'm not surprised to hear you say that tony k was amazing because uh you know he's a great director and then certainly showed it in that in that film um, yeah and do you 
do you have um do you have another sort of another another either another story or just an interaction with another actor or director um that that was super positive that meant a lot to you it could be going all the way back it could be you know something silly detroit rock city or green hornet or or it could be uh you know something a little more uh heavy that you did but is there another a time with another actor or director or producer or anybody that you were like just something that sticks with you a story that you tell about someone who um you know yeah. made you feel made you feel good or influenced you or inspired you um so after I did Terminator, I, I did uh, a movie called American Heart with uh, Jeff Bridges. Jeff Bridges, right? Yeah. So like I, this movie, all of a sudden, was a completely different movie. This was a this was like a very uh, this was like a serious kind of dramatic, you know, film. And um, I was so blessed to be able to have my first like real thing like that be with jeff bridges like mm. you know and um i feel like i learned so much from him man like um and he he definitely inspired me a lot you know mm. uh, as an actor um i mean he's so talented man. oh yeah very nice guy too eddie we, we That's do fantastic uh, we usually do a little segment here on be- uh uh on someone's best piece of advice um and I was hoping that maybe you had a um, a little gem that you could share with some up and coming actors, or even some you know experienced actors that uh, that they would you know like to hear something that you you, you feel is uh, helped you along the way. Yeah, dude. Um, actually, it was uh, it was Jeff, dude. Um, you know. Um, and it stuck with me forever, but he'd always, and I never got annoyed, you know, like, you know, it's like when other actors like, maybe you should try, you know, it's like, fuck you. But with Jeff, like, you know, he was, he like, would always just go, don't do anything, man. Just don't do anything. Like, just Mm. don't do anything. Relax. That stuck with me, man, for the rest of my career. Like. You know, you, you, you can overthink it and you can bring all, you know, it's like, like, like he really taught me that, you know, acting is very much based on the other person and that you, you to make it real, you have to like, just engage. You can't be like paying attention to yourself. You can't be mm. like, you know what I mean? You have to like be a hundred percent in the moment, no matter how many times you're doing it or whatever, you always have to um, bring yourself back. And it's like, you know, you're starting a take and it's like a fresh new slate, you know? And it's like um, not overthinking it, just letting it go, you know? And just being really, really relaxed. That's good advice. Yeah. That, and, yeah. and and to have, it ha- to have it have come from such a... a- cool place is even better yeah yeah we we, we've 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 said on here before it's you know less less is more and just to um just being is enough you know that you're enough as as actors we we sometimes feel like we're not enough and we're not doing enough and we're not acting you know and uh to just trust that uh that just being there and, and just smiling and looking and saying your lines sometimes is is more mm. powerful than, mm. than trying to create something um, you know that you think should be there 100 percent. yeah um we spoke briefly about um about the fact that i i'm sober um before we uh started um and i just wanted to know um if maybe you could share um i'm sure there's other people out there that um that are listening that are uh, either um, sober or trying to stay sober or wish they were sober. And I just feel like I'm a sensitive person. As an actor, um, I think we're all sensitive beings and um, I think some of us choose to uh, find some escape in uh, substance. And uh, I just thought maybe you could share a little bit about your journey and how, um, how maybe your acting has changed um, 
and how you feel about acting uh, being sober as opposed to not being sober. And if you, if you care to, and if you don't, then that's totally understandable. No, I, I would love to. Um, <clears throat> well, I, I, I definitely came from a place of, you know, wanting to feel like I fit in somehow, you know, and um, for whatever reason, you know, drugs and alcohol and all that shit kind of helped me feel um, like I was connecting with people. That's a bizarre thing to for some people to understand but if you're a drug addict i think you can and uh i did it for so many years i think i got scared of like what i would become without it like i i i it integrated into my whole personality into my life you know all through my 20s and 30s i mean i was known as a person who partied it is you know and it's like um I think at a certain point, I just realized that I'm hiding and I had to get real with myself and basically just admit that, you know, why can't you stop? And it's like, who are you doing this for? Because, you I mean, this is not who you are. And I just kind of realized that, like, you know, the most badass thing I can do was to completely admit, you know, prove to myself that I could live without that and that I'm still who I am and I'm still, you know lovable you know what i mean as 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 crazy as that sounds and since i've gotten sober i mean look my life isn't perfect um you know there's there's ups and downs and everything but there's there's a complete peace and there's like um it's so nice to know that i'm in control of my life mm. and when it, when i wake up in the morning i don't have to worry about like cops busting my door down <laughs> i have to like you know um, I don't have to be hung over. I don't have to go score heroin. I don't have to, you know, I wake up and it's like, it's just nice. It's nice to finally, like, it's, it's, it's a brand new feeling. And I'm almost like five years in. And I mean, it's just like this brand new feeling of just being safe and being, you know, healthy and clean, you know, like, um, you know, I mean, it's been a slow process. I think that the the pandemic really fucked things up with this fucking business, you know, but yeah. I, um, so it's been a little slow on starting. Um, I've been, you know, and I still have this fear a little bit in terms of acting. Like, um, I, I, I was almost like wondering, like, can I still act? Like, can I, you know, can I still, you know, like, because you're so raw, but I think like, Thing. I mean, when I, when I go, when I go shoot a, shoot a thing, like a, a huge part of it is the camaraderie with the whole crew and everybody and like going out to drink afterwards and fucking, you know, just hanging out, you know, and, and I always found it to be this like awesome feeling of like going to summer camp or something, you know, mm. and just now it's a totally different experience. Like I pretty much just kind of do it, maybe go eat and then just go home you know what I mean study my lines and go to bed like a normal person you know and uh I believe I mean I really believe that first of all if you're getting into this business and there's a lot of fucking you know I mean people like to party man uh, in in Hollywood and uh you know um if I could go back I'd tell myself to stay fucking clear of it just, mm. you know it's just not worth it and mm. uh you know I, I lost a lot uh and yeah you can just you can get thrust into the life and just get completely swept away and you know it's it, 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 you know all you have to do is look at all the other people who tried to do the same thing and mm. you know you know you can realize that, yeah you, I, you might think that you can handle it but I mean, Pl plenty of cautionary tales out there. Yeah. Plenty of cautionary plenty. tales. Plenty. Yeah. So, yeah. But I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I, I, I would hope that, like, maybe because I'm so raw or whatever, I mean, there's something, you know, really good lands in my lap that hopefully, you know, being 100% there would make me mm. better than I've ever been. Hopefully. Amen. Amen. Amen to that. And Amen. I just want to. Exactly. Yeah, go ahead. Chris. I would I would think so. I would. Th I was. I would just say I, I would. Um, first of all, I appreciate you sharing your story and sharing that with, uh, with us and, and our listeners. Um, it means a lot. Um, it's not easy to do. Um, 
I myself felt the same way I, I identified um, my myself with this guy that did these certain things that partied or whatever, you know, and to let go of that um, and and be able to have to feel everything. I mean, that's kind of like, it's amazing. It's like being an actor, there's sometimes um, you could feel something and not really, really even feel it. It's like, oh, I fooled them. It's that, you know, like I created this emotion that people think I really was feeling this thing. Um, but to actually be in a situation where I actually have to feel these feelings, good and bad, on a day-to-day -day basis, and I have to walk through these feelings that I used to be able to just go run and hide by drinking or using, um, is, is not easy, but at the same time, um, I myself feel uh, so much more connected mm -hmm. to everyone. Yeah. And yes, it's scary, but at the same time, it's exciting to, to be alive because I spent a lot of years, you know, staring at my feet, sitting on the couch, you know, and wasting a lot of time. And um, I just think that we have an opportunity as actors to, to change the world and to change people's view of things and life and, and, um, and you've been given this gift. So, um, yeah, you know, use it to the best of your ability, you know, be the, be the superstar that you are, yeah, you know, and, uh, and the, the freedom, know. the freedom you're talking about too, Eddie, you know, I, I, that freedom of like waking up and you, you know, you said your life is, it's like in many ways it's easier now, right? There's less, you don't have to worry about as much and there's an authenticity there. And, uh, you know, I, I've been in Al-Anon for more than a decade now, um, which is, you know, based on the 12 steps of Alcoholics Anonymous and is really for the friends and family or anyone who's been uh, affected by anybody else's uh, drinking or addiction. And, and in many ways, my life is so much easier now because I, I am reminded uh, almost every day that I don't have to control other people's behavior, that I, I can't control other people and that I have to stay in my own lane. And, you know, I wake up and I just go do the things that are the next right action. And there's a there's a freedom to that. Whereas I was working really hard to yeah. main, maintain, you know, and, and I hear this a lot in the rooms, like you people work really hard to maintain a certain kind of a persona and just to do what they think um, has to happen. So um, I, I love um, I love the idea of the freedom that you feel now and the ease that you feel. And I can't wait to see where that takes you next, um, too, and, you know, especially in front of a camera, brother, I got to tell you, you know, because. Thank you. I, I, I just can't wait to see it. And you were you were recently in front of a camera again. Was it Charlie's Horse? Am I getting the name of the film right? The yeah, one in Charlie's Texas. Horse. With, yeah. How did yeah. it feel being back on the set? Um, and no pun intended, but sort of getting back on the horse. Yeah, it was uh, it was it was great, dude. Um, you know, uh, getting to work with Casper Casper Van Dien. He was mm -hmm. uh, he was awesome. You know, it was great too because uh, he has a bunch of sobriety too so we got to do all that but um you know i guess like the biggest thing for me is like now that i am so like before it's like i mean you, you know we all like we all um do like our job for the day right but then we go home and beat ourselves up over <laughs> <laughs> like what we did you know and it's just like right. fuck man god damn it i should have i should have really right ah. i should have i should have yeah. i should have we're shitting all over ourselves that's right and i can't stop that yeah. <laughs> you know what yeah. i mean i yeah. literally can't turn that off now and um so i mean there's a lot of that but i mean again it's like this is all brand new territory for me and mm. um you know but I, I i at the same time dude like uh Honestly, that's my biggest escape, man. And and it, you know, it was it was nice to do. Uh, it was a good little film. I'm I'm kind of proud of that one. I think it's a sweet film, and it was nice to do something like just. I mean, it really meant. That was my first job since I since I got sober, and it just honestly, it just. Um, I think that's my happy place, man. It's just yeah. being there and 
that can get me out of my head because you're focused on whoever this character is and you get to kind of put those put that on you, you know live in those shoes for you know however long and it's 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 a great escape you know i think it's yeah. it's it's sort of you know it's it's like therapeutic to me you know it really is it's, it's awesome if the next role that comes to you and i, I know there's plenty of roles coming they're on their way but it, um if you could choose any anything um you know, and look, like as when we were all kids, I imagine we all said, you know, like I want to do a submarine movie because I loved Red October, or I want to do a western, or I want to do a horror. Or, but if you, if there was a character or a genre or just something that pops in your head where you're like, you know, what I would really love to do that that maybe people don't think that I could do, but I know I could do it. Um, I don't know. I don't know. I'd like to kind of get behind the camera a little bit. Ah. Like, that would be kind of nice, you know. Um. I've been doing this for so long and I, yeah. you know, back in the day, I, you know, I had people kind of offer me the ability, you know, the chance to do it. And I kind of turned it down because I didn't want the, the, I just didn't want to, the pressure of all that, but like, I don't know. I mean, in terms of roles, um, it's hard to kind of like say exactly right. what, just something that, you know, strikes a chord and something where, you, you know, it's, it's awesome when you're like, you really feel like you're conveying, you know, it's like my favorite fucking movies, like, you know, Taxi Driver and shit like that, you know, where it's just like, it, there's so many levels to it. And it's just, that's the best right there. Like, you know, uh, American History X, you know, things like that, just movies that are, um, that say something and have a profound effect on your there, psyche. Yeah. You know? Yeah. In, in something impactful. Yeah. 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 Have you been, have you been doing any writing? I always think that's for me. I, I, I think that. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know. You know what? I've, I've, I have so many ideas that float in my head and I'm a little bit ADD. Like I just kind of like, you know, I, I haven't had the, you know, commitment to sit down and actually write all these things down and try to form them into a script. You know, I should though. I should, and I'd probably be best if I had like a writing partner or something, you know, to kind of keep me going. But yeah, yeah, I, you know, it's definitely something I, I thought about, you know, and I've sat down with, you know, friends and helped them write stuff, you know, but I don't know, dude. Um, I could yeah, see you yeah, directing sure. something. That's yeah. why yeah. I said that. I, I, when you said I could, I want to get behind the camera, uh -huh. I was like, ah, oh, this guy would be a great director. Oh, thank you. Thank you. Yeah. It, um, it's, it's amazing, dude. Storytelling. You know? Yep, that's it. It's all about the story. Yeah. It, any as we wrap up, Eddie. Any, um, you know, people are listening. Uh, anything you want to say to the public generally, to you know, everybody out there who's like, well, we we can't wait to see the next movie. We we want to see Eddie on a HBO series. We're excited to see his acting. We're 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 proud we're proud of him for staying sober like i think everybody's pulling for you anything you want to say anything you want to offer last uh, last word so to speak um yeah man hbo would be awesome dude yeah there That'd we go awesome. let's put that it's out either there that or porn i don't know one or the other <laughs> but uh yeah I, we, I, we all have yeah. our talents all right, all right. <laughs> okay all right yeah. it's uh yeah that, that'll be my last call or i'll just you know i i could uh, i could i could put a hat down and you know stand on the promenade somewhere and just uh you know will act for food kind of thing but uh yeah <laughs> i kind of feel uh, like that's what we're all doing anyway but okay <laughs> yeah, yeah pretty much pretty much um i don't know dude um you know, again, like, since this is, um, since this is, like, a, a, an acting sort of thing, um, you know, I was saying this before, again, man, it's, like, I mean, it's, like, if you really are an actor, and you really love doing this, and it's, you're passionate about it, and it's not about, um, it really isn't, I mean, it's not about trying to be famous or anything, I mean, it's, it's, it's about loving to, convey things that are not easily i mean whatever it's it's different for everybody but you know it's like when you know that's what you love and that's what you're passionate about mm. um if you're that if 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 it's that strong in you then you're sort of built to be in this business and, and an actor and um i mean i just say you know 
follow your dreams, dude. Follow your dreams. Um, I mean, I've been so blessed in my life because I've gotten to basically, you know, to, to go to my job and love what I'm doing. I mean, there's there's nothing better than that. I don't care how little money I have. I'd rather do that any day than do a job I hate and have a bunch of money. You know, yeah. like it's it's just just being able to do what you love, man. Yeah. And uh, yeah, I mean, I guess that's All sort right. of like my little advice, I guess. Yeah, that's yeah. good. Hey, you may be talking about theater. I don't know, like, because right. you can do theater and tell great stories and make no money. But you may be yeah. talking about like maybe we see you on stage next. Who knows? That would be great. Who knows? Yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. Oh, I totally awesome. do that. Yeah, awesome. Chris, last uh, last last words from you. Parting advice, parting wisdom. Other than Eddie's awesome, anything else you got? I'm just you know grateful that he came on and uh, and spoke with us. And, Me too. Um, such a talent. Don't you know? Don't let it go to waste. Get out there. Show everybody you know who you are. And uh, I've always said uh, you know just we got to bury our ego. I say leave the ego at the door. You leave know it at the door. And, yeah. Uh, just uh you trust that you're enough i'm just you know once again grateful that you came on here um david it's a pleasure working with you i bet got you uh, i'm just always amazed at all the uh the advice that we get to share with um with Me people too. and and such honesty and yeah. uh authenticity it's been a it's been a blessing um Thank you, Eddie. Thank you, Eddie. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah, man. Yeah, man. You guys have been awesome. Thank you so much. All right. Thank you, Eddie. Appreciate it. Edward Furlong, everybody. Thank you. Tune in next week. We've got a great guest next week. I don't know who it is, but it's, I don't know, somebody great. Who knows? Not as great as you, Eddie, but it's somebody good. It's somebody That's, it's, a, that's it's somebody a hard good. act for you to follow. Yeah, that's, I know, right? That's good. That's what you want to be. You want to be a hard act to follow. That's good. Excellent. Um, thank you. We really, again, we really appreciate you coming and uh, being so candid with us and uh, talking about your craft and everything else. Thank you, Eddie. Appreciate it. Well, have a good one, you guys. Take care. Thank you. Well, it's been another great 20 minutes with you, my friend. And you too, brother. It's been fun. Yeah, that was great. Cool. I thought that was awesome. All right, star, star that. That was terrific. And we got another great guest coming up next week, so be sure to tune in again to Confessions of a Working Actor. 